I'm here with Aisha Yakububako. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. Yes, you okay, are. Okay, thank you. Now, she's the Managing Director at Onyx Investment Advisory Limited. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm Kemi Michael, by the way. Nice to meet you, Kemi. Pleasure is all mine. Now, I'd like to know, what exactly are the, being an investment director or manager, what are the investments that have been put in place for the north or mm. towards the north or up north? Mm. I'm an investment facilitation firm. So what we've done is we've worked with companies that have an interest in investing in northern Nigeria, particularly where our base is. And we've seen a growth in trends around agribusiness. There's a strong focus on mechanization and commercial agriculture. Those are the areas that we've seen a lot of growth. There is some interest in biotechnology that is growing, renewable energy and ICT. We've seen this, some growth in the fintech market, especially because of how it supports and targets the informal sector. There's been a lot of growth in that area as well. Too. Okay, so those are the basic places that are being looked at right now. Yes. Now, speaking about the agribusiness, yes. I'm a big fan of the northern things, the things that come from the north, big fan mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. But then there's this, uh, will I say, blockage more like mm -hmm. when it comes to security. Mm -hmm. Is that all, Does that also hamper with investment, people that want to invest in agribusiness? Yes. I think security issues have been a huge impediment doing business in the north, especially because at this point, after many years of being affected by Boko Haram in the Northeast, I think perception is even worse than the reality. The security situation in the North has reduced, is much better, uh, has increased, is much better. You know, agencies, states are taking extra steps to ensure that investors are protected and their investments are protected. And so you find the incidences of, for example, kidnap are happening in other locations, not just in the north. Now it's a Nigerian problem, not a northern problem. I think it's a concerted effort that is being taken by state governments and it's feeding into the national plan. Of course, um, we're seeing investors also getting involved in community development agreements where they take conscious steps of getting communities involved in the process of facilitating an investment which gives the con community ownership. And because of that, the community takes their time to protect an investor and an investment because they know affecting whatever affects that investment affects them as well. So it's no more about the investor. We've seen investors from southern parts of the country who have had communities going out of their way to ensure nothing happens because it's no more about tribalism or anything is about poverty, eradication and safety. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you want to advise someone going to invest in biotech in the north, what exactly would you tell them? There are specific, so there's, we found a very high level of skill in biotechnology. I would say if you're going to invest in biotechnology, you would have a lot more inroads if it's medical biotechnology as opposed to agricultural biotechnology. So there's still some indication of, I don't know the word for it, I would say there's still some concern with GMO related um, products. So there's some concerns with agricultural biotechnology products but there's very, very high levels of research going on in medical biotechnology. You find students in innovations hubs also, especially since the COVID-19 pandemic, you're finding, you know, youth that, you find kids that can't even speak English in the North going into science, technology, really doing research in their own way and trying to find solutions to medical problems. So I think anybody investing in that sector, one of the things they will find first is the high amounts of innovation that is happening there and then the skill they're going to have to, they're going to find a higher number of people with the skill to be able to work with them. That's, that's quite beautiful. Now, how about their reach? Talking about the skilled individuals mm -hmm. uh, up north mm -hmm. that have an idea of science, tech, and all of that, mm -hmm. 
how exactly can they reach technology in order to carry out these researches? What I've seen also is the unavailability of formal institutions that mm -hmm. will be able to harness the skills of these people. Sure. You find them in isolated locations, in isolation doing their own thing. I think an investor that is looking at putting some kind of venture pack that brings all these skills together in one place to bring out a solution that can become a commercial solution for a medical problem would be quite helpful. And that's an area that I think investors can go into. So from the investment manager herself, mm -hmm. you can go into that. Yes, I think so. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Thank I you. do appreciate it. All right. Thank, Thank you very you. much.